In this video, I wanted to show you how to design whitening trays or fluoride trays so that they could be 3D printed using Keysplint Soft, which is what I use. There's a conventional way of doing vacuform, but this is just to show you that it is possible with 3D printing. I printed this out back uh, about six months ago, used it around three to four times uh, for whitening, and it seemed to work well. It was a little tight, so I added a small offset of 0.1 millimeters, and uh, that's what I'm wearing now and it is, uh, I would say, you know, not as tight, fits better, and I've made a couple changes in terms of uh, just lowering the lingual aspect of the tray, also relieving on the distal just to allow for better seating of the tray because this is, uh, it is a bit thicker, more stiffer than the bleaching tray material. If you so decide you want to 3D print your trays, I just want to show you that it is possible. You know, it is pretty durable. I've used this old one for about three, four whitenings and it's still holding up. It's malleable. This one's 0 0.9. It's a bit, you know, same thing. And then can get it in and get it out. To me, if I can 3D print my whitening trays or fluoride trays, I'd much rather do that. Uh, just a quick cost comparison. To print out one whitening tray, takes about an hour and a half and it is about uh, roughly you know three dollars Canadian per tray in resin material and when comparing that to the laminate material that I buy from the supplier it comes out to about two dollars eighty three cents just for the tray then you add on the cost to print the the model which you know isn't uh, you know, really expensive but uh, it is technically I would say cheaper to 3d print and then uh, also post-processing these, these whitening trays I feel are uh, is easier as opposed to uh, trimming the scallops and everything off for the, uh, the suck down method. So the software I'm gonna be using today is uh, Medit Link and it has um, you know, a bunch of great software. It is free up to a gigabyte I believe and then $1 US a month which then allows you to get 10 terabytes or uh, quite a lot of uh, you know cloud storage so uh, you know you don't necessarily have to pay that one dollar a month uh, so but you know the the software is quite powerful quite useful and i, I would highly encourage uh, learning how to use it because uh, you know it's something you can delegate to your staff um, speaking of which, uh, I have a Google Doc here that I will be sharing. Uh, this is a tiny URL and it should be in the description as well. Uh, basically, um, it just goes through uh, with all these clips and steps in terms of what I'm going through in this video. So I have my staff member follow this and they make the bleaching trays on their own or and the same thing goes with night guards as well so again uh, this is what I'll generally be following if you uh, you know want your staff to follow this you can uh, just link or copy this uh, document you just need to hit attach so once you make a new case and you hit attach for the purpose of this video I'm just going to do the maxillary but obviously you can do the same for the mandible as well and this is just an intro all scan STL that I imported into the medit link software and then from here uh, now you hit medit design and there was a previous project but I'm just going to hit cancel and just do a new one and then choose the, the STL file I want First, we want to repair the scan. Sometimes a lot of these scans there you know, might be some holes which can kind of mess up the, the design process. So what you want to do is go down here and click this uh, fill holes button and then just hit apply. And then all these yellow circles where the holes were uh, goes away and easy as that. Next, we go to sculpting. And this is optional. If, this is only if you wish to add material onto the facial surfaces of the teeth you want to whiten. So, uh, you know, I hit one and then the brush size I can control by uh, holding down the command and rolling the mouse wheel up and down on Mac. And then I believe that would be control on PC. Uh, beauty of Medit Link is that you can run it on Mac as well as PC. 
So here, uh, basically I'm just, you know, strength is about 80%, brush size, I'm just doing the facial surface and I'm just clicking once, uh, sorry, once here, and then changing the size slightly bigger again, and then changing the size of the brush and here, And this just allows to have bleaching material, uh, you know, pool on the facial of the teeth. Uh, just uh, some people prefer this method, others don't think it's necessary, but uh, if you want to, it's just an option. And just go all the way to the pre molars. We won't do the molars because don't really need to whiten them, but just to show you in terms of the thickness that's added, I'm gonna control Z and you can see, you know, how much is added here. So and then I'm going to do control Y and you can see that out as well. And basically, uh, you know, if that's too much, you can always dial it back. But yeah, for the purposes of this, you can see uh, I added uh, space on the facials of, from second, you know, uh, from premolar to pre premolar to add material for, um, to allow for the bleaching term. Moving along my Google Doc, I want to now offset the model. So basically, uh, base, just hit this button here, and I want to offset the model by 0.1 millimeters. So just hit 0.1 and hit apply. And basically that just made it a model that's 0.1 millimeters bigger. I'm gonna hide the original orange model and then we're working with this green model here now. At this point, uh, now I want to hit duplicate. So just hit duplicate here. And this button here is a smart teeth selection. It basically, when I click it, it will try and figure out what are teeth. And it does a decent job, but in, you know, as is you know, a lot of AI type things, it's not perfect. So in this case, I'll just uh, highlight with the brush extra surfaces I want to include. And then, so I can do conventional brush, or I can even do uh, just connect like dots. All right, and then connect it all the way to the other side as well. With this uh, feature, you may get some holes in between and such. So, what you can do actually is expand what I like to do anyways oh actually sorry it is this one expand selected area basically it is you know filling up those holes and then now when you contract it and contract it margin of the attached gingiva and the teeth and that will get rid of the you know any holes that were in the selection originally and then from here now we want to go into deselection mode and I'm using the brush and basically just kind of removing any areas that you know, might be excessive, don't really need. And yeah, so then also in this deselection mode, I want to remove the distal aspect of the distal most tooth on both sides because I you know find that it's easier to seat just again because these trays might be a bit thicker than the conventional and a bit stiffer. And so uh, when I remove that, I find the tray seats better. And then, you know, if the deselection doesn't work so great with just the brush, again, you can just use the lasso and it will deselect everything behind it. And then same thing here, you know, you can do, just want to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, if I deselect this way, I'm going to deselect on the opposite side as well. So I want to undo that and just change the angle so that I can deselect the lingual portions of these teeth, which uh, will allow for better, easier seating of the tray. And same thing here. And I can go back to the brush and just kind of, again, brush any areas, maybe a little too interproximal. But even with this sort of interproximal, um, you know, extension, it's not too, uh, not too bad. But uh, the next thing you want to do, well, also remove the, you know, lingual portions on these anterior mm -hmm. teeth. 
but another important thing to do is get rid of the black triangle connection. So for patients that do have black triangles or holes in between their teeth, uh, this can be troublesome. Um, I'll show you in between the two centrals. I won't remove those and then you'll see as to why I recommend uh, removing it so that uh, it's just easier to deal with post-processing. So I removed it between the two, the laterals and the centrals, but I'm leaving it intact between the centrals and you'll see why soon. And again, I'm just removing you know, any excess here, just making sure that's good. Okay, just you know, quick look on the outside. Everything is still good on the facials. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, it is just a bleaching tray. And let's see here. So again, this area here is left connected, selected, and this area here is unselected. All right. And as it is this. Okay. So that's basically, you know, this is the duplicate function where I'm telling the software, okay, the area that I've selected, I want to duplicate. So now I hit apply and now it's been duplicated. And so, uh, you know, if I hide it, hide it. So this is kind of what we're seeing here. We want to thicken. So now we did a 0.1 offset and now we want to thicken it to its 0.9 millimeters. So we hit the thicken button and now we chose which one we wanted and we're doing 0.9 millimeters and hit check mark. Okay, so here is the, well, we uncheck what we originally had and then here's uh, basically the whitening tray. A uh, couple things just need to clean up a bit, but um, you know, you can either print it as is and just kind of clean off the excess or going back to the sculpt tool you can you know hit something like smooth and just kind of smooth out these excessive areas and what I wanted to show you is that when we left that hole that black hole in between the two centrals uh, you can see how it's bridged and completely you know blocking the ability to seat this tray so uh, you know that's why you want to do that in uh, before you thicken it and duplicate it so that um, you know this doesn't happen or if you forget or this does happen basically you know just print it as is and then take it to uh, you know just take a drill to here and just remove this excess material and you, you know you're free to kind of remove these as well but for purpose of my tray it you know we don't remove that and it seems to seat fine um, yeah and so basically you just that's basically it you just hit uh, overwrite and we're just going to save everything here exit pro after saving save okay and now we're back to here. So we have, I just want to, this is our whitening tray, so we can hit export here. And trays uh, one, just because I already have one here. And then I'm going to go to mesh mixer, and this is the you know, the exported STL file, and I just drag it into Mesh Mixer. And here, you know, this will print uh, fine just as is. And if you need to, you can hit Analysis and Inspector, and that can, you know, help clean up any, uh, you know, stripling. And yeah, this is basically ready to print. Uh, you know, the way it looks now, you know, all these pixels and such don't show up when you're printing and I find that it will uh, print just fine and it serves well as a um, way a method to do you know whitening with 
uh, without having to do the suck-down method. And so basically, you know, I've been using Polar Day and here applying the bleach from premolar to premolar and put it in. Uh, what I will say in terms of printing though, uh, you do want to print it flat. You can't do uh, at an angle because the print will fail. Print flat, key split, soft, cure regularly, and then also cure in glycerin because it will have a weird taste or stickiness to it, which you know, patients may not like. It will go away eventually, but just get rid of the oxygen inhibited layer. Um, so yeah, hopefully you find it useful. Um, and a way to make trays without doing the suck down and find an another use for your 3D printing. Um, thanks and uh, yeah, hope you found this useful. Have a good day. Thank you.